unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Father, we're believing for great things this evening. We humble before you, my God. The Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above, above, above that which you dare to ask or think. The Bible says my expectation is from him. The Bible says I have not called Jacob to seek me in vain. We are not wasting time in the presence of Almighty God. Something in our spirits is changing tonight. Wonderful things are happening tonight. It was ordained that we would be on this ground. Before we were formed in our mother's womb. We are aligned to purpose and course. Our destiny is sure. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we exalt you. Holy Spirit, Can you let your faith loose tonight? Don't bind it in any way. Don't bind it in any way. Don't limit your God in what He can do and what He is willing to do. Every crown I ever won, I lay it down. Every prayer I pray, I give it all to you. There is nothing in this world that can compare.
Give the Lord the man of praise. Praise the Lord Jesus. Tonight something wonderful is going to happen. Something wonderful is going to happen. Mark chapter 5 verses 35. Mark chapter 5 verses 35. The Bible says, While he had spit, there came from the rule of the synagogue's house, Saturn, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why? Troublest thou the master any father. Hallelujah. And as soon as Jesus heard that the word was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, the Bible says, only believe. Who knows the name of the ruler? Eh? Eh? Okay, give me amplified. <laughs> Probably let's begin from the amplified. While he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, Your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further? Overhearing, but ignoring what they say, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on what? Only keep on what? Believing. And the next verse says, And he permitted no one to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And the next verse says, And when they arrived at the house of the ruler of the synagogue, he looked carefully and with understanding at the tumult and the people weeping and wailing loudly. And the Bible says, And when he had gone in, he said to them, Why do you make an uproar and weep? The little girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And the next verse says, And they laughed and jeered at him, but he put them all out. And taking the child's father and mother and those which were with him, he went in where the little girl was lying. And the Bible says, gripping up firmly by the hand, he said to her, Talitha Kumai, which it's translated, little girl, I said to you, arise from sleep, from the sleep of death. And the Bible says, and instantly the girl got up and started walking around, for she was 12 years old, and they were utterly astonished and overcome, the Bible says, with amazement. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I want to introduce something very, 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 very interesting. You know, learning men cannot understand that anything released by God in scripture as progressive 
can only be to the intent that it is confirming what is already affirmed in your spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is why he must waken your ear as he that is learned. To speak to you as he that is learned. God has given you the word inside your spirit fully. Because the word is Jesus Christ. How many of you agree? And because the word of God is Jesus Christ, which is in you, you have the full word of God in your spirit, Logos, when you believed. Hallelujah. You received Jesus inside you. And the word was made flesh. And we beheld his only glory as the only true son of God, full of grace and truth. That is Jesus. Jesus abiding in you and I is the fullness of the word of God inside us. Everything from without comes to confirm what is within. Everything progressive comes to confirm what is already affirmed in our spirits as true. He has placed truth in the inside of us. And that is why the Bible says we know all things. Somebody say, I know all things. Say it again, I know all things. That's the essence of the anointing, to know. That's the essence of the what? The anointing, to know. That is why the Bible says, and when the Spirit of God is come, He shall teach you all things. And He shall remind you that which you have forgotten. That's the primary ministry, I've said that before, of the Holy Spirit, to teach you. Hallelujah. Because you have an unction, you have wisdom, that is what differentiates our light and the light of, of darkness, <laughs> if I make sense. You know, the Bible is very clear that everything that gives manifestation is what? Is light. But not every manifestation has the casting of the light of God. That is why the Bible says that if the light in thee be darkness, oh, how much darkness it is. Every form of manifestation in this world comes because of a particular light. But sometimes the light, by, by some, is of God. Hallelujah. And the light, by some, is of another source, which is the devil. The devil has a light too. He is transformed even as an angel of light. Hallelujah. But the light, that kind of light is what? Darkness. And because it is darkness in part and full, it does not carry the wisdom which is of God. And that is why I tell people the difference between the light of the glorious gospel and the other light is wisdom. That is what is justified of her children. Praise the Lord Jesus. That is what makes the Christ who he is in us. The Bible says he has been made unto us wisdom, redemption, sanctification, and all these kinds of things. That is who Jesus is. That's what he has been made to you and me. Praise the Lord. You cannot have the light of God and not carry the wisdom which is of God. And that manifold wisdom in Ephesians, the Bible says, was given to the intent for the church, that it might be shown to the principalities and powers and dominions of this world, the manifold wisdom of God. That the world, the, everything in this world will subject itself to the wisdom of God. Because the wisdom of God is eternal and the wisdom of this world is brought to nothing. Praise the Lord. Everything built, they are it, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And give me the amplified of that. I want you to read it, yes. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects may now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. And the Bible says, and this is in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose which he has realized and carried unto effect in the person of Jesus Christ. And the next verse says, and in whom, because of our faith in him, we dare to have boldness. The Bible says, and confidence of free access and unreserved approach to God with freedom and without fear. That is the only thing that gives you and I the access, the boldness to know that when I'm standing before God, I'm standing before Him with a freedom to access Him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why? Because I have His life. And that life and light has given me a certain wisdom. And that wisdom sets me above anything that is in this world. Somebody say, I'm set above anything that is in this world. Say it again and say, I'm set above anything that is in this world. Praise the Lord Jesus. That is why the Bible says a very important scripture. It says, by the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom knew not God. 
You, you, you get my point? Do you know that there are people who don't know God because they are wise in their own way? They are too clever to pray. They are too clever to believe God. They are too clever to walk with God. They are too clever to be born again. They look at all these whole things, you guys. These, these, these movies, you're acting, and they're like, You understand? Because there's a way salvation looks what? Foolish to them which are perishing. But unto us, hallelujah, it is life. Somebody shout hallelujah. But it was in the wisdom of God. That the world through wisdom will not know God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's like one time I was meditating about the crucifixion of Jesus. Do you know the Bible says that had they known this wisdom, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Satan would not have crucified Jesus if he knew who Jesus was and what he was going to do. And from the beginning, they're preaching the gospel of Jesus, the prophets and apostles of our days from the new... Uh, no, actually way before the apostolic comes through. The priests, the prophets, the kings, all of them are pointing to one man. And the devil doesn't get it. He's, he's, he can land on anyone and think this is the one. You understand? You see him even making mistakes. You get my point? He did not know how this guy was going to come, which way he was going to come, how he would walk this world. He would sense the guy. He would sense. He knew that there's, there's this guy. But there was a certain knowledge that was hid far from him. Had he known, if the devil had known, he would not have crucified Jesus. He would not. Why? Because he knows the results. <laughs> the Bible says he brought many sons and two what? Glory! If the devil knew that this was what was going to happen. All that God was up to some bigger. He would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He would not. Somebody say amen. amen. But to the men of old, it was revealed. The Bible says the scriptures for us seeing that God would justify the Gentiles through faith. He went and preached this gospel afore to Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And he spake to his seed, not as of seeds, as of many, as of his own loins. But the Bible says, But as of one seed, which is Jesus. God revealed to Abraham this mystery. Moses knew it. Ezekiel knew it. Jeremiah knew it. All of these guys knew it, except the devil. Somebody shout hallelujah. But it's amazing that it was proclaimed in the air, but it was not a clear thing in his head. It was hid from him. The gospel is a revelation. It's a revelation. It's not something that appeals to a man's intellect, to be reasoned out, to be reconciled with logic. It can't. The gospel, the gospel, the gospel is a revelation. That is why we're fighting with people. That Christ might be revealed. Somebody say amen. And that is why it it acts my spirit that heaven will shock many people. Because there are some people who think they are born again. You understand? They think they are born of the spirit. And they can even point fingers on others and say, Oh, you're shimmer. Watch this space. You remember what Jesus said? He said, Publicans go into the kingdom quicker than these guys who seem holier. Heaven will shock people. And I'll remind you when we are there. I'll tell you you remember. <laughs> because me, I have to go to heaven. <laughs> I have to go to heaven. And if you get there and you don't see me, fear. You've been in another place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because he purchased my eternal salvation. I'm not going to heaven because I've done everything right. Uh -uh. I'm going to heaven because he purchased. He began. He began a good work in me. He shall see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. He is the author and he is the finisher. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is able. He says, and none shall snatch you out of my, my, my hand. None shall snatch you. Nothing in this world can snatch me out of the hand of my Lord. Nothing. Oh, so, no, this is up to you. You believe and confuse yourself and convince yourself. I am fully convinced I must go to heaven. Because I know in whom I believe. And I know the terms. <laughs> Only believe. Somebody say amen. You see, let me show you something amazing. I think it's in First Peter chapter 1, verses 1. Give me the amplified of that. And now, see how Peter thinks about the church. He says, Peter, an apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ, writing to the elect, the exiles, 
of the dispersion scattered, sowed abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And the Bible says, who were, listen, oh, the Bible says, who were chosen and foreknown by the Father and consecrated. Oh, oh, ay, 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 ay. You see, you see what the foreknowledge did. It consecrated them, it sanctified, made them holy by the Spirit to be obedient, the Bible says. To Jesus Christ the Messiah and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace, spiritual blessing and peace be given you increasingly in abundance. That spiritual peace might be realized in and through Christ. And freedom from fears, agitating passions and moral conflicts. The Bible says because they were foreknown by God the Father. They were consecrated. That means they were sanctified and made holy by the Spirit to be obedient. That means in me there is a thing that has to cause me to obey. Your rebellion is temporal. Can I say it again? Your rebellion is what? Your obedience is what? Eternal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he put his spirit in us. To cause us. Because he knew if it wasn't for that, we had no power in our own self to make it. We have no... Imagine, he's saying he's coming for a church without spot, no wrinkle. How can a man be justified by the law? How can any flesh be as justified to be without spot, no wrinkle? Except by the divine aid of Jehovah God. And some people have a problem with us because we are simply leaning. And yet they sing the songs, Leaning, leaning. Uh Uh-huh. From all I love, uh-huh. So, some of us are just leaning because we know we could not stand on our own. Hallelujah. So, we fell on the guy's arms and says, Boss, take over. Just take over. And we know that he that began a good work in us. You see, if you believe the right thing, it starts to work in your life. The problem with many people is, when they are babes, they are not given sincere milk that they might grow there in. Are you hearing me? They are given the law. Yes, they are not given the sincerity. And because it's not sincere, it doesn't display the simplicity which is in Christ. Everything of their salvation is a complicated affair. If you are going to pay, serving God is hard, you understand? And then you begin that way. Babes are supposed to be craving for milk. Others begin by fasting. And then you die. When a person has just received Jesus, they need to know who God is, what the life of the Spirit is, what salvation is. By the time they fast and beat their flesh to subjection, They are subjecting to something they understand. They deserve the sincere milk. And as they churn the milk, it turns into butter. Are you hearing me? And when they wash their steps with butter, the rock pours out an anointing, an oil for them. They start functioning in the second dimension of the spirit. They walk in the miraculous. They heal the sick. They cast out devils. And then they are introduced to the meats of the spirit. They understand the judgments of God. They know the way of God. They know the way of the spirit. They know how he thinks. They hold the true revelation of his thoughts and very feelings. And then cultivate a certain relationship that is not based on midnight hour, 3 a.m. Wake up in the morning when Satan is doing this. You know some people, they are counteractive. You understand? They tell them, ah, now which doctors wake up at midnight? And then they say, aha, midnight hour. Shababa, shababa. You can't sleep when the devil is awake. Mama, mama. That is the time where you're supposed to sleep. In the middle of the storm. Hallelujah. Why? Because he that watches over you neither sleeps nor slumbers. It is useless for both of you to be awake. That is how our Lord knows. And the tidings and the waves are hitting these guys. And the Bible says, and Jesus was sleeping. He wasn't pretending to be sleeping. He was sleeping. He, he, you see, it's one thing to pretend to be sleeping. And then they wake you up. That means you're acting the part. But the Son of God, 
The Bible says he was asleep. In the middle of the storm. Already the moving of that boat is enough not to allow him to sleep. But there is a peace within. There is a peace within. That is why people don't understand some of you. Because in the time when you're supposed to be scared and, and moving to and fro and threatened about things, in the time when you're supposed to be on your bed receiving bad news and writing your will, you're still walking up straight and strong, saying that I know, that I know, that I know, that this is temporal. That is why they will never understand you. Some of you, if we enter your story, it is too scary for you to be here. Now yeah, you're here. Hallelujah. Have you ever woken up and you don't even know how you slept? How you woke up? How? You understand? How you paid rent? How you put on clothes? How you ate? And then you finish the week and say, Naimu Kama. How? I don't know when I'm talking to somebody. And everything in your life can't explain how. But you just know that things are working. Hallelujah. And sometimes you wake up and even situations worsen. And then you sleep and then you say, ah, look at this irresponsible fellow. How can he sleep in the middle of the storm? They don't know who you believe. Hallelujah. Imagine the guy waking up and says, you of little face. <laughs> I love that man. I love that man. The consciousness with the Christ. There's something about the consciousness with the Christ. You see, let this mind be in you. So some of you, look at how Jairus' daughter is dead. Hallelujah. Remember the Amplified says it. The daughter is dead. And the Bible says, they come and tell Jairus, your daughter is what? Dead. And the Bible says, and Jesus acted like he had not heard. You understand? And he just turned to the guy and told him, I'll go bad day. Just continue what? Believing. I don't know whether you're ready. He was still speaking and they came from the rulers and they said, your daughter is what? Is dead. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to the ruler, do not be seized with alarm and struck. He says, overhearing but ignoring. You see? Overhearing but what? He was, of course they were speaking. He was overhearing but what? Ignoring. And he said to the rule of sinners, do not be seized with the lamb and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. And then he continued in his business. And you realize he never put his eyes on the guy speaking. He never at one point. There was something that Christ knew. That is why when he asks them, what is the uproar? What is all this screaming and shouting? The child is not dead. The Bible says they looked at him and they said, What's wrong with you? Hallelujah. I want you to read the message. The message Bible says, and when Jesus was abrupt, he says, why all this busybody grief and gossip? This child isn't dead. She's sleeping. And the Bible says, listen, provoked to sarcasm, they told him he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know what he was talking about. Now, and, and here is another thing now. You realize that they are claiming that the Christ doesn't know because they claim of a certain knowledge. And that knowledge tells them the child is dead. And they're telling the son of God that he doesn't know what he is talking about. Because in both ends, as of whether the child lives or dies, it's knowledge. In fact, ignorance is knowledge. <laughs> Listen. When a man does not know, don't think he'll stay plain idly. No. The devil will give him a counter line of knowledge in what you call deception. Some of you, when the Bible speaks of childlike faith, let me explain childlike faith. Childlike faith is not being like a child when you're believing. <laughs> Some of you think that childlike faith, but I'm going one. No, no, no. Let me explain something about childlike faith. One time I was uh, watching uh, as a little small video clip on television, and there was this child, the parents showed the child a frog. And this baby walked to the frog. You understand? Eh? Just like that, he caught the frog and put it in the mouth. No, 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 don't eat. The parents screamed. Why? Because he had put what? 
a frog in his mouth. Number one, the dude doesn't know that frogs are not eaten. You get my point? He's not conscious in his head that a frog is dangerous to his health. His knowledge is innocent to heart and harm. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. How could this kid get... Huh? You see little kids and then there are these funny creatures. And this kid is reaching out to a, a dog. Do you understand it? And this dog you know is dangerous. But the kid is not conscious that this thing is what? Dangerous. He's not conscious that this dog is dangerous. And amazingly, they can't be harmed easily by those things. Because they don't have the fear to those things. Who told you that cancer kills? No. How did you know cancer kills? It was based on research, theories, and then they became what? Doctrines and facts. And then they said cancer what? Kills. You understand? And then they also invented the way to check it. Are you hearing me? And then they gave opinion that this is what? Cancer. Because they have names for those things. Our parents long ago never used to die because they didn't know what cancer was. The guy can tell you, ah, Ten years, the guy has been in pain, but he's alive. He lives up to a hundred. With the same pain. And then the same person goes to India and they tell you, Madam, if you move out, you're going to die. They cut. Hallelujah, somebody. There is that innocence that comes when a man is not conscious to the way the world thinks. Everything that you're seeing in the world right now, there is a huge line of deception in the world. In fact, if some of you are revealed to how much deception is in the world, you'd realize that some of them, it goes just beyond disease. It's, it's multi-million dollars of pharmacies. It's men wanting to make money. It's it's many things. You understand? It's the spirit of profit. You get my point? And don't say that I'm against being a doctor. No. We need you. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm only trying to tell you that faith in God is above these things. You understand what I'm saying? Faith in God. They just shall live by vitamin C. No. They just shall live by faith. Vitamin C has its part, but it's temporal. It's only for a while. You must live by faith. You must get to a point where you, you know that you know that you know that you know that you live by faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. But some of you, everything that you hear, you receive as gospel truth. Now look at an innocent child who is not conscious to harm. You see, do you know that that's the same thing about Genesis chapter 3, 9 and 1? You remember the story of Genesis chapter 3, 9 and 1? How God has told Adam and Eve to eat of any fruit but not of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. You understand? Some people confuse good with truth. Not all good is actually truth. You understand what I'm saying? That's why he has the other tree which is of life. Because life is after truth. You understand what I'm saying? If you are looking at it from your own personal understanding, the people which love Jesus on the cross were seeing like what is being done to him is not good. But the guy on the cross was purchasing our eternal salvation. It was a good thing that he had to be smite and afflicted for our own what? Transgressions. And our iniquities. Hallelujah. And by whose stripes we are healed. He's paying a price for us. But there's somebody looking at him and saying, I came off the cross. You remember Peter? When Jesus tells them about the crucifixion, the guy says, Ah, boss, before they touch you, you have to die. And he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou what? Sufferest not the things of God, but the things of man. You understand only the things of what? Man and not the things of God. But at that particular point, if Peter was living in the time many of us are living, nobody is going to touch you. And his wife would be like, oh, he's sweet. He even cares about our master, Peter. No, Satan was speaking on the film. Satan was what? Speaking on the fellow. 
He says, thou severest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Not every good is truth. Are you hearing me? Now, if you read the law, if you, some of you have understood biblical interpretation. There's something called the law first mentioned. The first time something is mentioned. Yeah? The first time the word fear, yare, is mentioned in scripture. It was in Genesis 3, 9 and 10. He says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And the Bible says, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. That was the first time it's mentioned in Scripture. And the Bible says, Because I was naked, and I hid myself. And the next verse says, And he said, Who told you that you're naked? Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Who told you? Who told you that you're sick? Who told you that you're broke? Who told you that you're failed? Who told you? Oh no, you see when you look, they fired me. Yes, but who told you that because they fired you, that's your end? That's the cause of all fear. Knowledge. Praise the Lord Jesus. If you do not know by God, you will know by another spirit. And if you know by another spirit, you will be exposed to the spirit of fear. God has not created man. Look at the way Adam was eh? before the fall and the eating of the fruit. You never hear Adam afraid of anything. He's walking in bears and lions. (laughs) They're giving high fives. Hey, what's up? And he's not conscious that these things can harm him. Because he named them. He named them. He was not conscious that these things could harm him. And the moment the guy eats that fruit, now they turn and name it your man. Because of consciousness. Because of consciousness. Hallelujah. Let me explain this more intricately so some of you should understand what I mean. When you look at the nakedness of Adam, and and this amazes me, God did not say, it's true you're naked. God's first concern was, who told you you are naked? You understand what I'm saying? It means that God was even willing. He had something in his spirit to still impute a certain righteousness on the man. But a certain knowledge could not expose him to that righteousness anymore. Why? Because the actions of that unrighteousness were exposed. How? He covered himself. You understand? But that same man once walked naked and he didn't know that he was what? Naked. He walked naked and he didn't know that he was naked. It was a knowledge. When he looked at himself, he did not know that he was what? Naked. But because he had something, he was open to a certain knowledge. Some of you think that ignorant men don't know. No. Ignorant men know. They only know from deception. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Even if you call it the fear of the unknown, it is actually known. If you ask them, what do you mean by fear of unknown? They can, for example, you can get an accident in future. And then, so why do you know examples <laughs> when it's unknown? There is no such thing as unknown. Because every fear in your spirit is conceived by a certain knowledge. It's conceived by a certain knowledge. Every fear in your life, it's conceived by a certain knowledge. So somebody says, ah, if you do this, this will happen. If you eat this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. And who tells you? Because we've seen proof. People have eaten it and done this. People have gone this way and that. Of course, they have all examples of everyone who has done it and gotten the same results. And so they conclude that everybody has to be the same way. It's a conclusion in the world. Even when we are raising our children, we warn them and tell them, don't do this because this will happen to you. And it's okay to a certain extent if we are simply speaking to them about the things that must be spoken of. But sometimes we go so deep into even deception and we believe everything as true and we leave the word of God. If the word of God said that by his stripes you were healed, it's your choice to die of disease. Now look at this proud fellow. No. Doctors are an extension of the healing arm of God, but they are an extension. And I don't have a problem with doctors. Again, I repeat, 
We need you. But you are an extension. Do you understand what I'm saying? I said, you also have to be wise. You know, <laughs> there was a time, my father is my witness and my mother. I got something they used to call about chronic malaria or something. I don't even know. It has a name like that. And every three weeks, I was down on the bed. My father used to pick me at night. What? Then they put a net on me. And then malaria increased on the net. I remember the day I removed my net. It was the last time I suffered from malaria. Don't try this at all. If you don't believe like I do. But the day I removed that net is the day malaria last touched this body. Why? Because I just woke up in the morning one day and I said, but wait a minute. I have the life which is of God. That same life raised Jesus from the dead. How can a mosquito bite me? So now even if they sit down, I tell, take honey, you're hungry, take. I want you to survive another day. Take of the life which is of the spirit. May you bite another person and they come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Am I communicating to somebody? That's why it tells you, be anxious about nothing. Be anxious about what? Nothing. But with all prayer and then thanksgiving, you're praising. The message Bible says, don't fret. Instead of worry, pray. He says, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Let God know your concerns. And the next verse says, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's a wonderful thing. What happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life? And the next verse says, and summing it all up, friends, he says, I'll say you'd all best do by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, the things to praise, not the things to curse. And the next verse says, put into practice what you have learned from me and what you have heard and saw and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together will work you into, work you into, work you into his most excellent harmonies. Wow, somebody scream amen. That's how it works. You wake up and they fire you. Then the whole day you're meditating of your next multi-million dollar business. They chuck you. And the next day you're meditating of your next marriage. <laughs> whoa, way. Whoa, way. Whoa, way. It hasn't worked today, but you're thinking of the next working. You understand? It isn't moving like it should move. But the next day you're thinking of the next. You don't even know how. You don't even. You don't need to know how. Hallelujah. Even if you have the worst news in the world, start praising God. Hallelujah. Start meditating on the goodness of the Lord. Wake up and start speaking things to yourself. Psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. Hallelujah. And the God of peace, the Bible says, He shall crush Satan shortly. Tell somebody shortly. Tell somebody shortly. Whatever you're going through, I promise you it's temporal. I don't care whether they are, but HIV. Ah, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up. There is a name above every name. That at the sound of that name, at the sound of that name, at the sound of that name, at the sound of that name. Hey! You're never going to leave. What do you mean by you're never going to leave? My living is no longer based on anything outside. It's within. It's what and who I chose to believe. The man said I would have fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There are things that will come, you'll hear news on a table, and they'll shock your heart out. Are you hearing me? But the moment your heart is shocked out, get the same thing and put it back in your heart and say, Koma, woma, angu. 
If you lose yourself, lose yourself for only two minutes. Get your heart back and say, but no, 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 no. Greater is he which is in me than he that is in the world. Listen, you cannot believe the word of God and it does not work. It will work. But so and so did it and it didn't work for them. That's them. So and so also tried this and they died believing. Let them die. Me, I made up my mind. I don't put my life on comparison to any man on what has worked on his life and what has and why. Because I don't know their level of faith. Maybe they were acting like they were believing, but they were not really believing. Me, I have believed on the Lord. And I must see His work in my life. I refuse to be anxious about situations. I refuse to be anxious about anything. I refuse to be careful for anything. The Bible says careless in the care of God. I refuse to worry. I refuse to fear. I say it, I refuse to fear. Tell your spirit and say, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave. He says, we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But we've received the spirit which is of God. And the Amplified says, by whom we cry in the bliss. Not in the, oh God. No, in the bliss. In other words, the experiences God has accorded to us are things God is willing and able to, to mesmerize, to shock. He wants to do things until you start weeping. You're not weeping because things are not working. You're weeping because it is too good. That's in the bliss of which you cry, Abba Father. I must believe, are you hearing me? That even when circumstances are funny, I will with bliss call upon the Father. Not in pain. And some of you, there is a way you know how to rehearse facts. But God is looking for a man who is in the middle, right there. The landlord tells you tomorrow you're leaving the house. Are you hearing me? And then you stand in the middle of your room and then you say, Father, who am I to deserve the mansion you're sending? You even start crying about it. Say, oh. Woo! In me. <laughs> Am I communicating to somebody? In the middle when the doctor says this is two years. This situation is two years. In two years you're going to be gone. And then you raise your hands and start weeping and say, God, you gave me long life. Thank you, my God. Thank you. somebody are you that crazy <laughs> praise the Lord Jesus I refuse to fear I don't care the news I've received I refuse to fear I don't care what I'm going through I refuse to fear I don't care what people say I refuse to fear I know that 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 somehow something will happen and see me through that one I know. I know. I know. And I keep telling myself every day, I know. A couple of weeks ago, I started to draw a list of people who fought me a few years ago. Eh? One time, I just got a pen. The Spirit of the Lord told me, just write. I wrote the list of the people who disturbed me when I began ministry. And the Lord told me, tick off everyone I dealt with. I ticked. Sure. Bananga, I'm remaining with only two. Musayama! Rubega Sirwana, Manigwe Nakiriza. Hallelujah! Don't fight. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in Christ for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and bringing everything that exalted itself above our knowledge of Christ. And bringing all thoughts to the obedience of Christ. The Bible says, in no means afraid of adversaries. Which is a sure token of their destruction. It's a sure seal. You know when you're not, give me the amplified of that. He says, when you're not, he says, and do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. For such constancy and fearlessness will be a clear sign. Listen, proof and seal. To them of their impending destruction. But a sure 
token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation. And that comes from God. What am I trying to tell you? Even if they hate you, get some sleep. Even if they have a problem with you, get some sleep. Even if they say, oh, we are going to destroy you in two weeks. Get some sleep. <laughs> Don't be afraid of man. Don't be afraid of man. You will survive after and low well before them. That's why you're my witnesses. I've never put war on this altar. I don't discuss men. I don't discuss their ministries. I mind my own business. And I know why. Because people don't come to hear nonsense. They don't come to hear who did know. They come to hear Christ dead and resurrected. When as a ministry, Paul says, I sought to know nothing and have acquaintance of nothing save Christ. Dead and resurrected. That's all I know. And that's what we intend to preach. We can't defile the altar. With ungodly chatter. We have a mandate. Hallelujah. We have a mandate. God is raising a certain boldness in our spirits every other day. Believe me, some people... Give us two more years. Two. One, two. One, two. I have believed. Tell somebody I have believed. Tell somebody I have believed. Listen to me. The greatest gift God can ever give you is the understanding that creates a certain relationship with Him that goes beyond how men understand fellowship. You see, some people, a guy can go on a prayer mountain for two days. And come back and say, I was on the prayer mountain for two days with God. And that's arguably true. He was on the prayer mountain for two days with God. And he spoke to God and the Lord spoke to him. But according to his level of understanding. You see, I also need to mention this, that God relates with us according to our level of understanding. If somebody approaches God in a certain indifference, God will relate to you in that indifference. When I came to you, he says, I wanted to give you meat, but I found that you were babes, unable to take milk. And so he says, and I still fed you with milk. When a man is of milk, give him milk until he's ready to eat meat. You see, God relates with every man according to what they are able and willing to take. There are things that certain people are not able to take because they are waiting by God. Are you hearing me? And don't be mistaken. All height in the spirit is defined by depth. You understand? You get my point. Every building of, in any kind can only go as high as the foundation that is laid. You understand? And that is why the Bible says his knowledge breaks all depths. But what is the essence of that? It leads you into deeper depths. It breaks a level of depths to take you to another level of depths. To take you to another level of depths. To take you to another level of depths. And so every time we speak about the presence of God in our lives and on our lives, that's a very relative experience and statement to people who are hearing me. When I say the presence of the Lord is on me or the presence of the Lord in my life, many people understand it according to, to their revelation of God. To their revelation of God. Let me explain something. When I was about 19, the Lord... Help me understand what it means to have constant fellowship. To have a relationship of constant fellowship with Him. You understand what I'm saying? Those things that persuade your spirit of His presence. And because He's present every time and you can feel and touch Him. There is a consciousness that you are awakened to and... Your fellowship with him changes 
the course of many things. Until you experience that kind of life with God, you might never understand what the Bible calls the boldness of the Spirit. You remember in the upper room when they come to him and they were being chased by guys who want to destroy them and then they say now stretch forth your hands and walk through us. We ask that you give us a boldness that we might proclaim this word without fear and everything. And the Bible says and the place where they were shook. And when it shook, the Bible says they were filled again with another level of the glory of God. And they moved out that day in a spirit and power of boldness like never before. There is a consciousness when a man has understood how much God is with you. There is a certain fear that flees. There is a certain fear that flees. It is the thing that qualifies us to stand in some of the most dangerous places and not worry because we know who is with us. You understand? I, I wish I could explain this beyond the words I'm trying to. Because many people are not conscious and have not cultivated this kind of fellowship with God. They have not cultivated this kind of relationship with God. So many of them are struggling to, to believe and not to fear in instances where they should not fear because He's with you. I wish I can explain something. For example, you don't see the Holy Spirit, right? But he's a helper, huh? isn't he? He's a helper. And he was sent to us as helper, comfort, and all these kinds of things. He is with us. You get my point? As you continue to experience him in your life, in the inside, there are certain operations that take place. And those things shape a certain world inside you. You get it? That's what faith does. It creates worlds. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. It creates certain worlds. When you create a certain world, you have released a certain atmosphere. Every world comes with a certain atmosphere. It comes with a certain energy of the spirit. It comes with a certain anointing, a certain glory. We understand that by faith. Which faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the Bible says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Plural. Worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen are not brought about by the things which do appear. Present continuous tense. It means this relationship, this fellowship that I'm talking about has to create a certain world. And that world creates a certain atmosphere. That atmosphere describes your level of consciousness to the things of God. And the things that are not of God, according to what you ought to know and the things you ought not to know. That's why Paul says, I would rather have you wise than to that which is good and very simple concerning evil. There is a certain consciousness that he gets out of you because of the world you have created. And because of that atmosphere that is created in your world, you are going to realize that certain things start to fall in your control. Nothing in your world is out of control. Every place you enter, you have control. By the Spirit of God. Why? Because He is working through you to establish the praises of His glory. That is why He makes us heads and not tails. That is why He makes us above and not beneath. That is why He says that we shall rule over this world. That is why He speaks of how that this is to the decree of all watchers and the, the holy men of God. That to the intent that God rules in the kingdom of men and he giveth it to whosoever he wills. That is the place where you realize that we were not called in this world to be survivors. We are not survivors. We are supposed to be conquerors. We are above all the situations, all the circumstances, all the systems of this world. Every time you start cultivating that world, you enter into a place where money is lacking. Money comes because you've come. You enter into a place where glory is lacking and glory comes because you've come. You enter a place, you remember the Bible says, when he started teaching, the Bible says, the power to heal was present. Why? Because he cultivated a certain atmosphere. I have grown a certain world where I'm, and that's how the crown of glory increases on your life. When the circumference of influence in the spirit realm starts to expand and expand and expand, and your name goes just beyond Kampala, it goes in the country, it crosses the borders for the testimony of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even the principalities and dominions of every nation know that Paul we know. Rebecca Grace we know. You can put your name. You get my point? That is not only the liberty and qualification that we have 
to demonstrate the life of the Spirit, but also to in a figure transfer these things. Like Paul says, I have in a figure transferred these things unto Apollos. Let me give you an example. Faith is for all saints. But there are gifts of faith. How many of you know that? And right now in the name of Jesus, I'm transferring the gift of faith. According to what is revealed in my spirit. I don't need to scream. I don't need to stretch my hands. No. My spirit man right now is operating. I'm imparting. Paul says, of these things, I have in a figure transferred unto Apollos. There are things he could not teach. He says, how be to them which are wise. We do impart this wisdom. Right now, there is an impartation taking place. That substitutes fear for faith. And even right now, if you want to receive it, it's available. Why? Because I am qualified. I have created. Fanero is not just a ministry. You understand what I'm saying? It is the person of God extending through his ministers. To minister according to the mandate that he has placed on their spirits. He has placed the mandate on my life. And by that measure and rule, like Paul says, we reach unto you. Are you hearing me? We reach unto you. There are certain things that you could struggle with for 20 years or 30 years. Yes, But in this world and atmosphere, those things can be transferred to your spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, start to speak in tongues. Start to speak in tongues. Tell God, whatever you want me to receive tonight, I receive. Now, make mention what you want to receive. I want to speak a few things on your life right now in the name of Jesus. There is such a thing as God walking through a man beyond the original expectation. Some of you right now, faith, faith, faith. Somebody's receiving. A grace to flow in the miraculous power of God. And I know who I am talking to. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, in the name of Jesus. Will you anoint that man? Will you anoint that woman? I want you to take this moment and speak to your situation. Create your world right now. And say, I refuse to die. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be derailed. I refuse to be destroyed. I am a servant of Almighty God. I am a child of the Most High. Greater is He which is in me than he that is in the world. I want you to start to speak to the most complicated things in your life. And let them start melting in this atmosphere right now. May God change your family. May God change your ministry. May God change your finances. May God change your vision. May God change your perception. May God change your experiences. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. Oh, Sarala Lava Can you take a minute and speak some things on your life in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, speak something for your family. Right now, certain things are happening in your family. Things are happening on your job. Things are happening in your marriage. Things are happening in your body. Whatever you've been struggling with, right now the Lord judges it. Not by power, not by might, but by His Spirit. The Bible says that perfect love casteth out of fear. Them which have been perfected in love have walked out of fear. The word for perfect is matured. 
God loves you. He loves you too much to let you be destroyed. He loves you too much to let you be derailed. He loves you too much to let that disease destroy you. He loves you too much to let that system consume you. He loves you too much. I feel and I hear by the same spirit that greatness greatness I hear that word greatness some of you knew the word but you didn't know the experience of what it means to flow in the greatness of God there are people on this ground your name is going to be great for the testimony and glory of our Lord I know who I'm talking to you're never going to be mentioned in some places anymore and your names are going to be mentioned in certain places even beyond the words that I speak and as much as I can articulate receive it in the name of Jesus your life is changing for good do not be afraid of what the doctor said do not be afraid of what the economy says do not be afraid of the situations and circumstances surrounding you don't even be afraid of how much things are worsening my God answer it by fire he will answer he will answer even the hardest sentences and he will dispel doubt in the name of Jesus Kabaka wasayuni Bologoma yuda Suka Yesu You are the king of Sinai, of Judah, reign, Jesus reign. Who told you you're going to die? Who told you you're going to fail? Who told you that that is your end? Who told you that that is your story? Who told you that you'll never make it? Who told you that you're too African to make it? Who told you that your education level? Who told you that your networks are the ones that make it? Who told you? I have good news. There is a God up there who says, Whatsoever you believe, Whatsoever you ask, he says, with him all things are possible. He began that work in you, he'll see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. He loves you with an everlasting love. He is there for you, was there for you, and he will be there for you. Even when you're naked, he will clothe you. whatever you're dealing with and he will remain with you. I refuse 
to listen to the testimony of the devil. Listen, there are people here who had believed that they are done. I have good news for you. God is not done yet. That is fear speaking. Believe God again. Believe God again. I don't care how old you are. Believe God again. I don't care how bad things are. Believe God again. I don't care how, how, how desesperating situations are. I don't care what men have said and what you think even of yourself. Begin and believe again. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you hope or dare to ask according to the working power that worketh in you. Father, we thank you because our lives cannot be the same again. My world is defined according to your word. The relationship I have with you. The fellowship I carry with you. You say none of those things shall in any means come nigh me. Because of the world that I've created through faith. I believe in the name of Jesus that I will not fail. I will not fail. I don't fail. If you believe it, say amen. Now, if you're sick, I want you to touch where it's fading right now. I speak healing. Uh, in your body now I want to give an opportunity to somebody here who says that I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior please come right now please come right now come encourage them to come quickly you have one love me oh you have one it all for me. Death could not hold you down. Oh my God. Sit in majesty. You are the risen King. King. Oh. Yeah. You have won the victory. My God. Now I want you to raise your hands in the air. Tonight you're receiving the King of Kings, the Lord of Glory, the Alpha and the Omega, the present and the future, the first and the last, the great I am. Hallelujah. Your life is not going to be the same again. Now I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and rose again for my sins. That you are the Son of God. I thank you because tonight I'm born again. I receive your life. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.